Hey, hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the vlog, the final vlog of 2022. And once again, we are at Best Bet Jacksonville to play on the live stream. This is an action-packed lineup, from what I understand, including Aaron B, who's sitting directly to my left. I don't like that. There's a guy by the name of Pittsburgh Paul here that apparently is really good for the game. He's over in the 2 seat, and a guy that goes by the name Trace Tacos, who plays a lot of the bigger games, the 2-5 and the 5-10. So, should be a good time. If you enjoy, like, and subscribe. Let's get to it. You may notice a little bit of raspiness in this recording. Santa's big gift to me this year was the flu, so I'm trying to get over that. Action-packed lineup. This should be a lot of fun. In typical Best Bet Live fashion, it's not going to take long for me to get involved. In the fourth hand of the night, there's an under-the-gun straddle. We see Jim and Plus Two bumping up to $15. It folds to Mike in the cutoff who calls. The action's then on Luke on the button, who three bets to $60. I'm in the small blind, and I peek down at Pocket Kings. I'm going to put in a four bet here. And given the dynamic of the table so far, even though it's early, I'm going to size up big. I don't want to let something like a suited A7 stick around and draw out on me, so I size up to $210. Unfortunately, it folds all the way back to Luke, who we can see is in a tough spot here. If I'm in his shoes, I could see merit to calling, but any flop without a face card, and it's probably getting all in anyways. And I think he realizes that, and so instead, he decides to jam for 500 total. And he's going to go ahead and rip it, and Andy with a snap call. Wow, this, again, this is like the, we haven't even gotten through the first orbit yet. Yeah, we've had, and we've had, uh... Two all-ins, two chop pot. No, actually, it was three all-ins, one hand. Two uh, chop pots. The only thing that can save Luke is a queen. Only a queen. The board runs out, and we see an ace on the river. Don't love that, but as you can see, he has pocket queens, and we get the full double up on hand four. So, uh, uh, Tim. Yes. That was like hand number five, right? About 20 minutes later, there's a button straddle. We see the small blind bump it up to $20. Then we see Mike and plus one call. It folds to me in the cutoff. We looked out at pocket queens. Given that Pittsburgh Paul was the opener and there was one collar, I think I can size up on my raise a little bit here, and so I bump it up to $75. It folds back to Paul in the small blind who makes the call. It's back on Mike with an unsuited ace, and he decides to call as well, so we're off to a flop three ways. The flop is four deuce nine rainbow. Feels like a really safe flop. It checks to Mike in plus one, who just rips it for 211 total. It's on me, and now it's time to think a little bit. Mike called two all-ins earlier on a double-paired board early in the night for his whole stack. The guy's bet sizes have been off the entire night as well, so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate things like sets. If he happened to flop one here, then fine. He's going to get my money. I think if I just flat here, it's 210 for Paul to call to win about 650 total, so he'd be getting 3-1. to one. I think I could actually drag him along for a pretty good price. Paul's range is very wide. And it could be a hand exactly like what he has. He could have ace X. Lots of hands that I'm beating. So I like to just flat here. Yeah, Paul unfortunately folds, so we'll go heads up to a run out. No, sir. He's gonna be like, no, I'm good. He's an ace or five for that double up there. Oh wow. my gosh, the five I announce queens and Mike flips over oh, wow. ace three for the straight. Mike then accidentally needles me a little bit when he says always hurts when it comes on the river. Truth be told, I don't think he realized he turned it. I think he genuinely feels like he rivered me. Okay, pretty gross, but nice hand, Mike. About 15 minutes later, there's a raise from Jim and under the gun to $15. Then we see a call from Mike and plus two. I'm in the cutoff, and I look down at pocket sixes. I call to set mine. We see a call from Aaron on the button. The small blind folds, but Paul and the big blind calls, so we're off to a flop multi-way. The flop is 10-jack-4 rainbow. It checks over to under the gun who bets $25. Will in plus one is open-ended and he elects to just flat. Mike gets out of the way and it's on me and sixes aren't great, but I'm probably beating a lot of hands like ace high or king queen or eight nine. I probably should raise to apply a little bit more pressure, but I elect to just call and evaluate a turn. Paul gets out of the way, so we're three ways to a turn. The turn is another jack, now making it way less likely that I'm up against one. Now, as we can see, that's not at all true. Jim has a jack, and he continues on this card for 50 bucks. Will and plus one flats again. And now here's Andy, 5% equity with two pair, sixes and jacks. Let's see, 50 to call with 267 in the middle. I mean, I hope he folds. Yep, thank you, thank you. I'm getting over 5-1 to one on a call, and I'm still beating all those bluff hands I mentioned. So once again, I call, we're off to the river. 
The river is a five of spades, and it brings in a backdoor flush. Jim starts to reach for chips, but then he stops and he checks. This is really bizarre, and it was very obvious he did it. And it makes me think that maybe he's the one that was on a straight draw and bricked out. Action on Will, and he rips it for 290 total. So, it's on me, and I kind of knew this could happen. All I can beat is a bluff like King Queen, which I actually put Jim on and not Will. So, I end up folding. Action back on Will, and he's in the blender here. He looks really, really uncomfortable. He tanks for almost two solid minutes before folding. I ask Will to show the bluff, and he happily obliges. Wow, he got the bluff through. <laughs> Why do I keep asking people to do that? About an hour and 15 minutes into the stream, there's an under the gun straddle. We see plus one open things up for $15. Paul and plus two makes the call. It folds to Will in the cutoff, who then three bets to $50. Mike and Luke get out of the way. I'm in the big blind, and I look down at pocket jacks. I want to raise, and I want to make it a size that could let us get it all in on a good flop, so I bump it up to $200. Tacos and Paul, who I was actually kind of targeting, get out of the way. Back on Will, the three better. As we can see, he has a huge hand here, and he decides to five bet rip it. I mean, I was looking to shove most flops anyways, right? I call. No improvement for Will. No improvement for Will. Losing some outs. We see the run out we hold to take in our second 1K pot of the night. About an hour and 20 minutes in, we see a raise to $12 from Luke in the hijack before it gets to me, and I look down at two ladies. Perhaps they're here to right themselves from earlier. I re-raise to $35. It folds to Tacos in the small blind with two jacks, and he puts a four bet in for $135. Pittsburgh Paul immediately calls. It folds back to me, and I consider a five bet, but we're playing pretty deep here, over 1K effective, so I like to just flat and see a flop. The flop is king four eight with two diamonds. We see tacos bet out again for $135. And again, we see a snap call from Pittsburgh Paul. It's on me, and this is a real tricky spot here, as tacos could have ace king, kings, or even aces here. The two snap calls make me think Paul could also have a monster. If I call here, what do I do on the turn? Wow, you're in an interesting spot for Andy, and he folds. I end up letting the queens go. The turn is a ten of spades, and we see it go check, check. I don't like that. The river is the three of diamonds, completing the flush, and once again, they check it down, and Paul is going to win with a flush here. I was really teetering between raising and folding on the flop. The thing is, Paul likes to gamble. With the way he's played so far tonight, I could see him calling a raise and a turn shove with his flush draw, so maybe a fold was the right move. I'm not sure, but Paul's going to win this one. Pittsburgh. The biggest hand of the night happened about two hours in. The graphics are off, but the board is ace nine four with two clubs. Tacos leads out for $30, and then Paul comes over the top for $175. Then Jim on the button jams for about $950 total. It folds back to Pittsburgh Paul. <laughs> I think I have you. I have nothing. Paul lands on a decision, and it's to call. The board runs out a seven of diamonds and a nine of spades. Jim flips over ace nine for a flop two pair and rivered boat, and Paul shows 10 eight of clubs for a missed straight and flush draw. This was like a $2,200 pot with, in my opinion, the tightest guy at the table getting all the chips. It would also be the end of Pittsburgh Paul, as he left about five minutes later, and the dynamic of the game shifts drastically from this point. With the action player going bust, the table is about to really tighten up and get a lot more skill-based. There's a button straddle. We're in the small blind, and we look down at the third time tonight for pocket queens. I bump it up to $20. Aaron in the big blind calls, as does the button straddler, so we're off to a flop three ways. The flop is jack-3-2 with two hearts. Sometimes with multiple people in the pot, I'll check, but with two hearts out there, I decided to go ahead and see bet for $40. Aaron in the big blind flats, which brings the button along as well, so we're still three ways to a turn. The turn is an ace of spades, so it is not a good card. I slow down and check, and Aaron bets $90. Will on the button folds his draw, and it's back on me. 
While the ace isn't a great card, it's also a great card for Aaron to bluff on. So I don't think too long and I call, hoping to improve on the river. I do not, as the river is a five of spades. I check, and Aaron shows some mercy and checks behind. Will actually would have rivered a straight, but Aaron's going to take this one down. We're going to play a bomb pot this time. $70 in the middle, and we head to a flop. The flop is queen nine six with two hearts. It checks to Will on plus one who bets $20. We peek down at king three of hearts, so we have a flush draw, and I call. It folds to tacos, who then raises to $75. It folds back to me, and nothing to do here but call and evaluate the turn. The turn is a seven of clubs, so I don't improve. I check to tacos, who this time fires for $125. I'm getting about three to one on a call, so I think I need around 30% equity here in order to make this call. It feels like a close spot, but any non-heart river, and I'm stuck, so I like to just fold. In this next hand, there's an under-the-gun straddle. We see plus one bumping up to $15. It folds all the way to Mike on the button who calls. Will in the small blind comes along as well. It's on me in the big blind, and we look down at pocket kings. I'm going to raise. With four people, I size up to $65. It folds back to plus one who calls, as does Will in the small blind, so we'll go off to a flop three ways. The flop is ace five four with two spades. Will checks it over to me, and I consider a check, but I don't want plus one to check behind on such a connected board, so instead I fire for $125. Plus one gets out of the way and it's back on Will. He has a pair and a gut shot, probably the type of flop he was looking for with that specific hand. Will takes his time with this decision and he keeps looking down at my stack. After about 90 seconds, Will ends up shoving all in. Can't say I'm that surprised. Nothing I can do here but call. The run out isn't great with two diamonds and an ace, but luckily those cards don't connect with Will and we win this It's bomb pot time again, $70 in the middle, and we head to a flop. The flop is 565 Rainbow. It checks to under the gun, who fires for $20. It's on me, and I look down at pocket jacks. Kind of an awkward hand to wake up with here. While I do have an over pair, in bomb pots, anyone can have anything. And so a raise feels like too much of an overplay, so I elect to just call. We see the hijack call as well, so we'll go to a turn three ways. The turn is a seven of diamonds, so it's really starting to connect this board. Will checks, I check, and the hijack actually checks behind. The river is a five of clubs, so now with three fives out there, I'm pretty confident that I have the best hand. Will checks, and I'm going to go for some value here, and I bet $65. We see the hijack fold, but Will snaps me off. We roll it over, and we're good. And this next hand, there's an under-the-gun straddle. We see four callers before it gets to me in the big blind, and I have queen-10 offsuit. There's a lot of dead money out there, and I'm 40% of the way to Broadway, so I bump it up to $25. Aaron folds, but everybody else calls, so we're off to a flop five ways. The flop is 10-jack-deuce with two spades, so I flop middle pair. Will checks, I check, and it actually checks all the way around. The turn is a four of diamonds, feels like a complete brick. However, Will fires on this card for $70. I'm me, and this card shouldn't change anything, and given that it checked through, I'm pretty sure I actually have the best of it right now, so I end up making the call. Everyone else folds, so we're heads up to the river. The river is a great card in the 10 of clubs, and Will immediately leads out for 150. I don't see him having jacks here. Deuces and fours are definitely a possibility, but it's unlikely. I know trips isn't the nuts, but I think it's the best hand at this point, so I put in the raise to $450. Action back on Will, and he's in the tank again. Looking at his exact hand, I'm not sure why he's thinking so long, unless he's just convinced I'm raising with a missed flush draw, but I've stayed in line all night, so that play wouldn't really make much sense. The longer he thinks, the more I want to call. Will eventually does call, and we show him the bad news. This $1,200 pot is coming in our direction. Wow, I'm surprised he called. I don't, I mean, I mean, yeah, Andy could have had a flush draw. Four hours in, and we'll take a look at the stats, and we're the big winner, up about 1500 bucks. We do head in our final hour, and then, yeah, there's a look at it. Andy, wow, what a night for him, man. 
In the final hand of the night, we see a raise from Will in plus one to ten dollars. It folds to me in the cutoff, and we look down at Ace King offsuit. I re raise to thirty dollars. Aaron on the button calls, as does the original Razor, so we're off to a flop three ways. The flop is five deuce king with two hearts, so we flop top pair and a backdoor flush draw. Will checks it to me, and with Aaron behind me, I try to get sneaky and check, but unfortunately he checks behind. The turn is a jack of hearts, so it brings the heart draw in. Will checks to me. I have the ace of hearts in my hand, blocking some flush draws. I do want to try to get some value out of this hand, so I fire for $50. It's on Aaron, and we see he turned some equity here with second pair, and so he comes along. Will folds, we're off to the river, heads up. The river is a three of hearts, so now we've made the nut flush. I make a mistake here, and I bet. I think I need to check to keep all of Aaron's bluffs in, but I don't really know who's bluffing on this board. I also size up way too big. I make $180. Who's calling there except maybe the king of hearts? Aaron knows I'm too tight to be bluffing there, and he lays it down. There was one more hand right at the end of the stream where Aaron flopped two pair and I paid him off, but overall, another great night on stream. Okay, we will wrap that up on a chilly December night. By chilly, I mean mid-50s. Um, and so weird. It's like the tale of two, two different sessions. Uh, it just started with so much action. That guy, Paul, drove the action. I was getting involved with monsters. And then, man, when Paul left... The dynamic of the game just completely shifted. Uh, it turned into much more of a skill-based game as opposed to getting it in and hoping that it holds. Um, but still, a really fun night. I think I gave a little bit away there at the end trying to make something happen, but that's fine. Got to give people action sometimes. We were into the game tonight for 500, out for 1,680. If you enjoy, like and subscribe. See you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more poker content. And you can follow me on Instagram at 7cardflushpoker.